everyone. Welcome back to the Manufacturing Stream podcast. I'm your host, Eric Whitley, Director of Industrial Transformation at L2L. If you didn't know, L2L is the most comprehensive connected workforce platform on the market. From maintenance to production to quality to training, L2L puts your entire factory on the same pane of glass and everyone can manufacture better together. Hey, thanks for joining me today. I am, uh, I'm really excited to talk about this topic uh, today. You know, everybody is talking AI. Everybody is talking uh, continuous improvement. What do we do? You know, recently the Federal Reserve came out with some statistics, and I'm going to bring that chart up here uh, for those of you that are watching on video, uh, which shows some pretty troubling news. And the troubling news is that ever since about 2012, the output of uh, the labor within manufacturing has pretty much plateaued. And we know now that you know, we are really in a skills gap here in manufacturing. We're having a hard time getting people into manufacturing and understanding, uh, you know, what their role can be and that manufacturing really is a great career path. And so what do we do about this? How do we, how do we attack this? Well, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. Uh, you know, one of the things, if you look at this chart, what you're going to see is that ever since probably, you know, early 80s, late 80s, all the way up till about 2012, that the output and throughput of the employees in manufacturing has constantly gotten better. And if you correlate that to things like 5S, total productive maintenance, uh, Toyota production system, lean, the Six Sigma, throughout all of those years, we were pushing these improvement processes and you know, really kind of ingraining that into manufacturing all the way to the point that academia actually picked that up and started to teach that within academia. I myself taught some of that at Ohio State, uh, you know, and all of the other universities. And so people coming out of uh, universities now all have the lean concepts. They all have the thought processes in their head, and they bring those w into manufacturing. But what happened in 2012? Well, you know, to be frank with you, what happened in 2012 is that we started to talk about Industry 4.0. But my problem and what I think has happened is that we turned our gaze to data. We, we, we turned our gaze away from continuous improvement, and we turned it towards data. And we thought that Industry 4.0 was going to be this magic bullet that was going to solve the problems. If we just had enough data to go solve the problems, we could solve the problems. And I think a lot of people kind of sat back and waited for the data to actually go solve the problem instead of understanding that we have to actually apply um, – our knowledge, our problem-solving knowledge to uh, the data that we're seeing. Instead of waiting for the data to do the solving for us, we actually have to apply the techniques and the tools that we have in front of us to go uh, solve the problem that the data is showing us. And so we've really kind of struggled over the last few years in order to make sure that we are continuously, continuously improving. Um, you know, some of the questions that we have to ask ourselves is, you know, are we really at a precipice of what humans can do within manufacturing? I personally don't think that we are, um, but, you know, those questions have to be asked. The other question that we have to ask is that, is the um, pool of skilled workers drained? Have we drained the pools? Well, one of the things that, uh, that uh, I see is that what we haven't done a good job of, and, and I'll take this back to Industry 4.0, is that we haven't filled the pipeline with people to uh, learn manufacturing, to become the leaders of manufacturing, to become those that are in the factories that are solving the problems. You know, one thing that we've always done really, really well in manufacturing is solve problems. I always say ever since the day that the second employee is hired in a manufacturing company and the second part is produced, we are doing nothing but solve problems from there on out. How do we get better? How do we get safer? How do we get faster? How do we do it at, at a, a better cost? These are all things that are constantly in front of us when it comes to manufacturing. And we do that really well. We've kind of gotten away from that. I think some of that problem is, is that we lie back and said, you know, we, we think that 
uh, automation. We think that the data, we think that all of this stuff is going to solve our problems for it. And it really hasn't happened. So we have to go back to like looking at continuous improvement. The other things that we that we found too is that when we get workers into manufacturing, we have a hard time getting them up to speed. We have a hard time getting them trained and on board to understand what they need to do. And so it's very difficult for people to kind of engage because we want them to be engaged quicker and yet they we don't give them the time to kind of really understand the culture and get involved in the whole process. So we've got to come up with better ways to do that as well. Um, and then the other side of that is that our experienced workers are actually cycling out of the process. So all of this learning, all of this knowledge, all of this, these years of understanding are cycling out of the manufacturing process, and we're not picking any of that up. So we've got to go solve these problems, and we've got to really kind of focus in on these issues. This is really having a major impact on manufacturing. You know, L2L did a survey here a few months ago. Some of the things that we are are seeing and some of the things that came out of that survey is is 81%. We I think we interviewed like over 600 folks. And what we got out of this is that 81% of the folks are saying that, you know, resignations and turnover of skilled people within inside of manufacturing is having a significant impact to the way that they're actually doing business with inside of the organization and their ability to produce more efficiently at a more cost effective in a more cost effective manner. The other thing that we see is that that 78% of our respondents are saying that just the lack of skilled workers is having a major impact on throughput, quality, safety, cost, all of those things that we measure with inside of manufacturing. So how do we deal with this? How do we come up with a better way to actually focus in and, and kind of turn, turn the ship around? Well, one of the things that we've been advocating lately is that we have to get back to basics. And, and when I think of basics in my career and we think about basics, what we're talking about is availability, performance, and quality. And those of you that are familiar with the, the metrics of OEE, you know that those are the three main things with inside of OEE. And then the other thing that we have to focus on is the workforce. So availability, performance, quality, and the workforce. And so we have to get back to the basics of improving those three things and with workforce as well. I think the workforce thing will come as we begin to apply and begin to actually get better in what we do. So let's talk a little bit about that. How do we do that? Well, we know that the, that the workplace is changing. We know that the workplace is actually uh, going through some transformation. And what do I mean by that? Well, here at L2L, we, we talk about the fact that, you know, the connected worker is really the worker of the future. If you think about the way that people learn, if you think about the way that this generation ingests information and shares information and talks about information, um, they don't do it with pencil and paper anymore. They don't do it with with photos. They don't do it with drawings. They do it digitally. And what we have to have is a platform for them to be able to use, share, interact with uh, that in manufacturing. You know, they, they're not going to want to interact digitally in their life. And then when it comes to stepping inside the manufacturing plant, go back to a manual method. They know that the processes and the technology is there for them to be able to actually go and uh, access that information. So it's very frustrating for um, the new generation of manufacturing workers to have to go look something up in a book as an example. You know, you have you send a new maintenance guy back into the back shop and have them have to go pull an old dusty manual off of a off of a shelf to go find out what type of grease they should be putting into a bearing when they know that the technology exists that they should be able to just go ask AI a question and have that question be answered for them right there on the job so they don't have to go spend that time doing that. And and really what it does is that it enhances and makes uh, the factory better, but it also enhances and makes the um, the organization better as well and the individual. So today's connected worker really does 
kind of learn differently. They access information differently. They access processes differently. And uh, they, they want to learn and they want to have access to that information. And so now what we want to do is because manufacturing is such and has always been really good at solving problems, we have, and you may use a, a, a different process, you know, if you think about the plan, do, check, act process to go through and solve a problem, we want to create and have that go faster. We've always had that. That's always been a part of lean. Ever since I've been teaching lean manufacturing since the early 90s, the key has always been to get the organization to turn the crank faster. Don't change the way that you turn the crank, but turn the crank faster so that you become more efficient in the way that you actually do the work. And this is where AI kind of steps into the process because we want people to be able to uh, troubleshoot faster. We want them to be able to get information faster. We want them to be able to, uh, you know, get answers quicker. We actually have here at Elto we actually have a... Uh, an organization that's using our AI tool because they do an, uh, a shadowing training process where somebody has to shadow a mentor and they want to reduce that by 50%. So they want to take it from six months of shadowing down to three months. And the way you do that is that you give them tools to where somebody doesn't have to go find their shadow in order to ask a question. They can now answer it with, with AI. And so one of the examples that we give is that, you know, manufacturing is turning to AI. And what that does is that it speeds up that process. We don't change the plan, do, check, act process. We just come up with a quicker, better way to do that. And so, you know, you're, you're thinking about things like asking questions to AI. Hey, what is the, what type of grease should I use on this particular bearing? And then AI will answer and say, well, what machine are you on? And then it'll come up and say, this is the grease that we think you should use. So AI is a very practical application with inside of, of a connected worker platform. It's not some big, you know, scary thing that people should have to go worry about. The, the way we want to apply AI with inside of manufacturing is to apply it at a very practical level so that everybody in the organization can use it and access the information uh, to answer the questions that they have. Uh, this is very simply done, and it's easy to do because all you have to do is make sure you have all of your information in, all your documents in, all of that inside of the system, and then AI can actually go in there and take that process. So what does it do? It basically goes in and pulls information from history. It reduces that process of the learning curve that people have to learn, and then when it does that, it gets back to that very basic core principle in lean of removing waste, right? It eliminates waste, whether it's quality, safety, downtime, throughput, performance, whatever that waste is keeping from uh, happening, it actually helps eliminate the waste. So think about the scenario I gave earlier where a maintenance person has to go walk back to the shop in order to pull a manual, right? That's a very um, time-consuming, wasteful time, wasteful motion. If we can get that answered, that question answered right there at the machine, then we eliminate that waste and then create uptime with that. So that's um, the amount of time that we saved from walking back and forth to the maintenance shop is the amount of time we can create uptime on the on the machine. And it it really doesn't cost anybody anything. It doesn't create tension in the workplace. It doesn't create extra work. We're not telling anybody to hurry up. What we're simply doing is using AI to eliminate waste within inside of the process of actually going through um, and doing that maintenance process. And there's a ton of other applications that we can, we can apply to that. Um, things like AI uh, suggesting to the mechanic what spare part they may need to use. AI suggesting to the mechanic what uh, troubleshooting tasks are the most commonly used task when this particular machine goes down. So we really need to start looking at the application of AI in manufacturing from a very practical angle. 
How does the worker on the shop floor use AI in order to get better and eliminate waste within the organization? So, hey, well, hopefully that uh, gave you a little bit of information on on how we need to use AI, um, how we need to apply that within within your organization. If you want to see how we apply AI with inside of L2L, by all means, you know, go to L2L.com, uh, click on a demo. We'll give you a demo. We'll definitely show you how this works. We have customers that are using it right now, and uh, it's very effective. So take some time. Go do that. Uh, go follow us on LinkedIn. Go follow us on YouTube. Uh, if you have an opportunity, please go like and subscribe this video. If you're watching the video on uh, on YouTube or whatever platform you're watching it on, go like and subscribe to the video for us. And uh, we'll keep trying to bring you much more content about how technology is helping manufacturing and how we're moving forward and helping the workers on the shop floor manufacture better together. So once again, I'm Eric Whitley. Uh, this is the Manufacturing Stream Podcast, and we'll talk to you next time.